Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be experimenting with a new AI animation tool called ToonCrafter. I'm also going to be proposing a new workflow for creating an animation for only two frames, as you can see in this preview. However, bear in mind that this new exciting tool is still in development and is going to have more features implemented and refined. But for now, let's see what it's all about. And first things first, let's jump over to my favorite animation and posing tool, Cascader. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'd know how useful Cascader actually is for creating dynamic poses quickly and easily. Ideally, I would have a reference, but posing in Cascader is so easy that I just grab these points as you can see, and by moving them, the rest of the body just follows suit. And remember, we only need two keyframes for this video, so basically, two pictures of a subject that's moving. Uh, so, I'm only going to make two dynamic poses, and the Toon Crafter tool is going to interpolate between them. So once I'm done with the first dynamic pose, I'm going to start blocking out the other one. Of course, make sure you render out your animation in an image sequence, and bear in mind you only need two animation keyframes here. The two dynamic poses that I mentioned, of a character standing up, for example. And you may be wondering why am I using a default mannequin, well that's because I'm going to be using stable diffusion to stylize this character after the atomic heart robot. So once I'm done posing them, I'm going to export these image sequences and start using them in automatic 11.11. Here in automatic 11.11, I'm going to be using a controlness model, two actually, one for the depth and the other for the open pose model. And I'm going to start with a very simple prompt and make sure that I insert the character Laura that I had in mind in the prompt, usually at the end or in the beginning, but I found that at the end, Laura's make much more sense. Again, I'm going to be using the atomic heart Laura for the robot character, because it looks really similar to the bots in uh, Unreal Engine, I mean the mannequins in Unreal Engine. So let's see some of the results that I had. Of course, take your time, experiment with multiple checkpoints and LoRa's and uh, parameters uh, down in Automatic 11.11 until you get a satisfactory result. After which, you only need to do one thing, which is upping the sampling steps, uh, controlling the seed using like one seed so you can control uh, the two outputs of uh, the two dynamic poses that you're going to insert. Once you have a satisfactory seed, you can up the sampling steps as I said and do a high risk fix and finally you can use a refiner to you know refine the images further. And this step is actually optional. I use Krita or sometimes Supir AI in Comfy uh, so I can uh, up level uh, my character's uh, resolution or sorry i mean like this basically does more than a high risk fix um it recreates the image in a more sensical way here i'm just writing a prompt in uh, korea uh, so that my character looks more well so that my character makes more sense actually and to refine uh, some issues in the image that i've generated so once i've generated two satisfactory keyframes or images i'm going to start finally uh, using ToonCrafter. Now inside ToonCrafter, the method is very straightforward. Insert two images, a seed, a prompt, and then press generate. And let's see what we can come up with. I like it. The consistency is fantastic. The subject is really clear. Of course, it has the AI vibe of animation, but honestly, all things considered, with what we provided this tool with, the consistency is impeccable. It's still the same subject, and it stood the way I wanted it to. From a sitting pose to a standing pose. And another test, still good, and it even blends between the backgrounds perfectly. Let's give it one final test and see how it goes. Afterwards, I want to try something else, maybe some 3D characters, and see how it works out. Still, good consistency. But I found that using 10 frames per second gives you the best results. 
Now let's see what happens when I insert an original character, maybe a 3D character. Here is one of my characters that I made, called Shedman. Well, could use some work. I did not insert that I wanted him to talk in the 3D character pose prompt. I just wanted him to change poses. Let's try something else. Maybe a standing character. Let's see what happens. Again, he's talking. Okay, let's say a 3D character change in poses maybe, a 3D character stand pose, something like that. And make sure you change the seed every once in a while. There is no randomization of the seed like uh, automatic 1111. Well, I guess I'll stick to Blender if I want to make an idle pose. Bear in mind this is only two seconds, so you just can't judge this tool that recently came out because it just generates two seconds from two frames, have you? But it's decent. Let's see how good it is with handling human faces, or in this case stylized faces. Not too bad, honestly. Well, this was it for today's video. I hope you found this tutorial and new tool helpful. If you did, please subscribe and let me know in the comments. Till next one, guys.